Okay, now we got more labor intensive questions. Uh, but again, we have we're just going to derive equation 9.19 or 1.79 and obtain equation 9.180. Okay, B plug or put 1.80 into Maxwell's equations 1 and 2 and obtain equation 181 and check that you get the same results using 1 and 4 of equation 9.197. Okay, whatever. Uh, let's just start with what these equations are. So what we want is for a monochromatic wave propagating in a tube. Now we're dealing in waveguides. Okay, so we're going to have to deal with a couple different things. Here we have a, you know, exponential, which we kind of expect, except that coefficient has to deal with the, uh, that coefficient is a vector. Okay, um, and each thing has a different, uh, based on which way we're in the guided wave, we have E naught X, E naught Y, E naught Z, same thing for B. Um, and of course, Maxwell's equations in a waveguide, no charge, no uh, current. So all we're doing here is showing that we have Gauss's law equal zero, divergence of B equals zero, curl of E equal negative B dt, and then curl of B is equal to one over C squared, uh, so Ampere Maxwell and then uh, Faraday's Law, good to go there. All right, so laborious, but let's dive in. So A, show that we need show that we need to do, okay, so what we need to do is plug these into uh, the waves into Maxwell's equations and simplify. Okay, so from three, if we take the time derivative, we know what to expect, but now we need to find a curl components of everything. Um, here, what I want to emphasize is that when we're finding the curls, we have the partials. Again, be very careful. Um, that being said, uh, each part of those things has to be accounted for, and we see that the exponentials eventually cancel. So what we so what we can find then is to partial e naught z since we don't know what it is with respect to y is equal to negative uh, i k e to the zero y. Um, Again, sense of the fact that the partial of z with that exponential gives us a factor of i k, and we see that that's equal to i omega b. But again, the exponentials cancel with the right hand side of the, or excuse me, with the curl, or excuse me, the time derivative of b. So that would be the case for all of the curl components. Similarly, it's just a matter of chugging these through, which one has an i k, which one just stays as a partial, and so on and so forth. Um, and if we're matching coordinates, we see that we have uh, sub x, so that goes to the b not x, sub y, so it goes to b not y, and sub z goes to b not z. Um, okay, so with that, now we can just kind of consolidate from equation four, or the uh, uh, Maxwell's law, or Ampere Maxwell. Uh, we have uh, time derivative, one over c, time derivative of e, we get that, and again, we see the exponentials cancel when we take the curl of b, so take the x curl, we see what that part is. Um, and we see that we get, again, some kind of partial derivative with all the other coordinates. Again, x and x have to match. Curl component y goes to ey, and curl component z goes to ez. None of this is necessarily hard, but it's laborious, and we simply uh, have to be very careful with the notation. Some even drop the tilde, uh, since we're using a computer code it's easy to just to copy and paste but it is definitely a necessity to be very careful copying and pasting okay now that we have that baseline down from maxwell's equations what we need to do is multiply three by k and five by omega now these are the curl components that we're multiplying by not maxwell's equations okay and what we're trying to do is subtract them that way we can isolate down ex component and then EY component and so forth. So how to do this is by algebraically multiplying and subtracting. Totally cool. Uh, this reminds me of linear algebra with row ops, to be honest. Um, so K times uh, three on both sides and omega times five on both sides, take the difference. Again, just algebra it takes a couple uh, easy manipulations to see that we get cancellations where we want them to. And if we factor out the E naught or yeah, push everything over that has everything to do with E naught X to one side, get everything else over. So add them over. 
Uh, we need to factor everything out, which has an I according uh, I on it. And whenever we divide by um, I, we want to rationalize that denominator, so we just do that now. Hence, the minus sign gets absorbed uh, in the uh, parentheses there, because I times I is negative 1. And then we just see here in the box exactly what we expect. We derive that in the book as well. Similarly, if we multiply 2 by K and 6 by omega and add, we can isolate E not Y. I'll let you look at that for a second. And, uh, of course, we can't uh, just leave it with the electric components. We have to do it with the magnetic components. Again, the thing about the waveguides is that the Z components are, in this particular case, are zero. So we really don't have to worry about that. Or we don't have to worry about solving for them in these set, in these types of equations. Because, or maybe not zero, but they are the E, the e and B, Z components are coupled. Uh, again, more detail in the book, but here we go. Now we're going to solve for b not x, and now we're going to solve for b not y. I list the operations there in the next part. Again, copy, paste, cancel. Same moves. You see they're of similar structure, so nothing should look too, too crazy. Uh, some clever operations that, that seem to be it, but that's uh, only the thing. Now for part b, what we want to do is uh, plug these into Maxwell's equations uh, divergence and make sure that they work out. And uh, I think that'll be pretty quick and easy. So here, um, the divergence is equal to the components uh, with their spatial derivatives. Uh, and if we do that, we simply get E naught X, E naught Y, and then uh, I K, E naught Z. Uh, every term has an exponential. And since that's supposed to go to zero, we cancel that out. Really no big deal. But what we know about uh, d by dx of e naught z and d by dy of e naught y well we just found those so let's plug them in um and so here's where the mess continues is after we plug the components in we need to evaluate the derivatives so we send the derivative into the parentheses again everything else is the constant so we can push them through uh notice that the i over omega uh divided by c squared minus k squared. It happens in both the x and y partials, so no big deal. Now uh, we can have the partial squared of x, uh, the mixed partials x, y, partial squared y, mixed partial x, y, well, the mixed partials cancel. No big deal there. Um, as you see here now, we have, in the next step, a ability to factor the k out, so we get a factor of ik in both terms, so they cancel. What a lovely surprise. And uh, now, if we divide over the things to get rid of the that fraction on the bracket to isolate the double derivatives, now we get the coupled equation for z. Everything is in terms of z now. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Or a headache, either way. So here's the first coupled equation for z. And that's the electric coupled equation. And now we'll do the same for the uh, magnetic coupled equation for Z. Again, set it up, cancel out the exponential, take the derivative, push it onto the inside. The mixed partials cancel. Uh, again, we can change the order. Thank you for uh, that, uh, Clairaut's theorem. And then uh, again, cancel the IKs, blah, 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 same thing. Again, pretty symmetric in that respect. Nothing about this was necessarily hard, but it's definitely cumbersome. And the thing that I could see people getting tripped up with is knowing which operations, uh, which multiples and operations to do to isolate E naught X, E naught Y, and E naught B naught X, and B naught Y, and then substitute them in. Again, algebra, love it or hate it, you still need it.